announcement seemed to have taken the market by surprise. Not sure why that is, because a lot of companies have been signaling this upcoming slowdown in automotive and industrial chips, excess inventory at manufacturers. Of all the IDMs, looks like hot garbage right now, doesn't it? But it's definitely not. Hey everyone, welcome back to Chip Stock Investor. Today we're going to be discussing the automotive chip stock meltdown that seems to be brewing in the semiconductor industry. We know over the last few quarters, even while PC and consumer electronics were hitting the bottom, automotive was still climbing in the semiconductor industry, but that seems to be changing. So we're going to do a little earnings preview for companies like OnSemi, Microchip, and ST Micro. All of those companies are heavily invested in the automotive portion of the semiconductor industry. Let's introduce this by talking about an announcement that Intel's majority-owned company Mobileye made last week. Yeah, this Mobileye announcement seemed to have taken the market by surprise. Not sure why that is because a lot of companies have been signaling this upcoming slowdown in automotive and industrial chips, excess inventory at manufacturers. We got the initial take from on semi almost three months ago. Now, ADI analog devices reiterated that microchip. Everyone's been pretty straightforward about this. And then mobile light comes out with this announcement and suddenly the stock starts sucking wind. Not sure what the market was expecting here. But what, what, let's just show you our first earnings preview before we get into all of the IDMs, the integrated device manufacturers and power chips. Mobileye, we're going to start here because this one's a bit different. First of all, it's not an IDM. It's not a device manufacturer. It's just a fabulous designer. But you can see here, actually, they are expecting growth in the fourth quarter of 2023. They tightened their guidance range around revenue and adjusted operating income expecting about 12 and a half percent year over year growth. So that's good. Exceeding the IDM portion of the automotive industry here. But then the Q1 2024 outlook is where things get really dicey. They're expecting a 50% year over year decline in revenue to 229 million. Adjusted operating income from a year ago expected to swing to a operating loss of as much as 80 million to kick off 2024. Now, again, this is excess inventory. There's a few million excess chips of their IQ uh, autonomous driving systems at their automotive manufacturer customers. They're going to help clear that inventory in Q1, take it on the chin and then return to sequential growth after Q1. So that's the reason for the really, really ugly looking Q1 outlook. Of course, we'll see how they execute. Excess inventory has now hit the automotive industry, just like it did smartphones, PCs, consumer electronics, like you mentioned, Casey. This downturn is about a one-year lag, as Nick mentioned, but behind the PC and smartphone downturn. Although that market bottom was originally predicted to last through summer 2023, it's now the beginning of 2024. And so we know that was actually delayed by quite a bit. The big difference between auto and industrial chips, however, is it's in full-on growth mode. Multiple secular growth trends are intersecting. Vehicle and energy grid electrification, think big lithium ion batteries, as well as factory automation or AI and vehicle autonomy. And of course, yes, multiple secular growth trends there in industrial and automotive. In our last video on Qualcomm, we talked about how 5G networks are actually still a secular growth trend for some companies like Qualcomm. And we do think that's true. Check out that video where we explain why that is. But the big difference here, as you just mentioned, multiple growth drivers for automotive and industrial. PC and smartphones, overall, unit volumes are about tapped out. This is probably going to be a low single digit on average growth industry in the coming years versus industrial and automotive chips, massive tailwinds propelling these forward. And we've got a chart here to show you what we're talking about exactly. To hit that point home, check out this chart from NXP Semiconductors. We always talk about the chip industry getting to a $1 trillion market by 2030. 
And you can see that most of that growth is going to come from automotive electronics and industrial electronics. The kegger for automotive, 13%, industrial, 9%. Yeah, and while we have that chart pulled up, you can see by contrast, wireless communications, computing and data storage. Uh, of course, there's a lot of talk about AI that kind of gets commingled in here, as well as consumer electronics there towards the top. You can see there, there is, of course, some expected growth in these markets, but a lot of it is making that pivot towards AI, especially the data center opportunity right at the moment. We'll see how that pans out in the coming years as more of that maybe shifts to on-device AI. That's where consumer electronics could hit that 7% Kager you see there in the chart, hitting roughly the industry average. But the point here that we want to make, wireless communication and computing, PC, not really the secular growth drivers that they were over the last previous two decades, automotive and industrial really taking over now through 2030. At least that's the expectation as we climb towards that 1 trillion total market opportunity. Taking a look at our semiconductor industry flowchart so you can get a visual of where these companies fall into the semiconductor industry. When we were talking about Mobileye, that company falls into the fabulous designer categories. Mobileye's business model is different than these other companies that we're going to be talking about today. So we do expect their financial outcome to be different. But let's zero in on this IDM section of the semiconductor industry flow. That's what we're going to be focused on today. When we speak about an IDM, we're talking about an integrated device manufacturer. Those are companies that design and manufacture their own chips in-house. And just a quick plug here for our semiconductor industry flowchart. We have a video on that as well as a 2024 manual for this semiconductor industry flow, which you can find on our Kofi shop. In this episode, we're going to focus on the complexities of the supply chain for each of these automotive companies. And we're going to show you some charts for each company in regards to their most recent earnings, the financials that they prov provided, and what we expect from the earnings that will be coming up in a, just a few weeks. All right. Roll the on semi footage here. As some of you longtime viewers probably know, we finally started nibbling on on semi again about the middle of last year. And this is one we're still interested in nibbling on. But we'll walk you through why that is because this chart doesn't look all that pretty. Revenue and adjusted earnings per share EPS were increased 0% and negative 4% year over year in Q3 2023. This is about the worst performing Q3 calendar year 2023 chart you'll see. Part of that is because OnSemi has been exiting legacy business. They have sold off some of their operations in the last couple of years as uh, CEO Hussein Okori and CFO Thad Trent have kind of migrated on over to their more focused vision going forward. So that explains part of the muted looking results for Q3. For the Q4 outlook, things expected to get a bit worse. On was one of the first companies to sound the alarm on the coming downturn in automotive chips. So we're curious to see if things end up as good as they actually expect, or if maybe things are a bit worse than this in Q4. But year over year decrease of 5% in revenue is what their outlook was. At the midpoint of adjusted earnings per share, expecting negative 9%. The reason this could get a bit worse than expected is in their most recent quarter, Power Solutions Group, PSG, was about 56% of their total sales. Uh, the balance of that, sensors, uh, a little bit of timing and logic chip, some other stuff, was actually performing a bit poorly in Q3. Much of that, again, due to their planned exit of some of that business. But PSG Power Solutions Group was actually up 10% year over year. But why this might get a bit worse than they originally forecast is that silicon carbide business, SIC chips used in, of course, electric vehicles, EVs. Previously, they had been expecting about 1 billion in annual sales. That got reduced to 800 million for calendar year 2023. All of that due to just one automotive parts manufacturer reducing their demand, at least in the short term. This has some big implications, of course, for air test systems as well, which were also 
eagerly awaiting earnings from later in January. About 80% of air test systems revenue actually coming from on semi. So if on semi hitting a short term rough patch, air test systems could also perform a bit worse than they had originally forecast as well. We'll have to wait and see. Now, moving on to Microchip, this is another company that we have started buying in the recent quarters. Microchip has historically been a complete integrated device manufacturer in IDM, but now has started to outsource more of their chip manufacturing to fabs so that they can focus on that design portion of the business. For Q2 fiscal year 2024, which was the quarter that ended in September of 2023, Revenue was $2.25 billion, and on an adjusted basis, earnings per share were $1.62. Both of those numbers represented an increase at that time. However, moving into Q3 of fiscal year 2024, which will be the quarter that ends in December, they expect a 14% decrease in revenue and a 28% decrease in adjusted earnings per share. With such decreases in revenue and earnings per share, Nick, why are we still adding this one to our portfolio? Yeah, out of all the IDMs, microchip looks like hot garbage right now, doesn't it? But it's definitely not, as you said, total system solutions. So more engineering of chips, more software design to a company those chips for their primarily industrial and automotive customers that are not tech businesses is we think a big, big deal for microchip. And in fact, a long-term adjusted operating profit margin target for the company is 44% to 46%. They're only forecasting 41.5% for the next quarter that just ended in December. Yeah. 41.5% in a bad quarter is their expected adjusted operating profit margin. This company is highly profitable, even in what is expected to be a pretty rough patch. That's why we think the, the stock itself has outperformed a lot of IDMs in recent months as it's become increasingly apparent there's a downturn coming for industrial and automotive. And, and this is the reason why that long-term operating margin target that the company is really not that far off from, even in a pretty ugly period. So just to reiterate our, our top two picks here on semi, the company that has sort of moved upstream, you could say, uh, bringing a lot of the silicon carbide bull production in-house, and then the company moving downstream towards those total system design and software engineering microchip. Now let's focus on two companies in Europe that have dominated this automotive market segment in the semiconductors. This is for all of our European viewers, ST, Micro, and NXP Semiconductors. Nick, tell us what their expectations are and why these are such solid choices. Yeah, these are investor favorites for good reason. We've left Infineon off, of course, that's the big one that's in Germany, because they actually trail behind in, in terms of operating profit margin. When peeling back the layers, it looks like ST, Micro, and NXP have a lot more laser focus and are executing operationally a, a bit better. So higher profit margins, especially if a coming downturn is the expectation, we think that's a good place to focus your investing dollars. So these two companies are why they made the list versus some other IDMs in Europe like Infineon. But as far as outlook goes, both of them had fairly lackluster Q3 2023 financial results. But for ST Micro, expecting about a 2% year over year decrease in revenue in Q4. And NXP actually, interestingly, expecting a 3% year over year increase in revenue. Now this could radically change, especially as they provide their Q1 2024 outlook. It could come in very, very different, much like what just happened with Mobileye. But we think there's two things that both of these companies have going for them. For ST Micro, Silicon Carbide. Yes, absolutely. For ST Micro, automotive and discrete made up 46% of their revenue in Q3 2023, and they are on track for $1.2 billion in SIC revenue in 2023, making it the largest SIC company. They also began volume production of gallium nitride, or GAN, last quarter. This is a somewhat similar product to silicon carbide building wide band gap semiconductors. Of course, very, very high level 
here, wide band gap semiconductor like GAN and SIC. All that means is it takes a higher level of energy uh, in order for those semiconductors to conduct current. So they can handle higher voltages, which is why SIC in particular getting a lot of attention in electric vehicle production. And then gallium nitrate, GAN, getting a lot of attention in some specialty communications applications, for example, like radar, let's say. So ST Micro, a leader in manufacturing these types of products. And then maybe a pivot over here to NXP, Casey, about that expected increase in Q4, which is pretty impressive outperformance, at least as far as what the expectation was a, a couple of months ago, 3% revenue, 6% earnings per share, expected increase in Q4. We alluded to this a bit in the past. So automotive is usually well over 50% of NXP's revenue in any given quarter the last couple of years. But there's a lot of other stuff going on at this company too that could actually help keep the business afloat in the coming quarters during the automotive downturn. Last week, we did a video on Qualcomm, and we talked about the fact that mobile and consumer electronics are coming out of that downturn. And just to reiterate that NXP can also benefit from this upturn in consumer electronics as well, because a good portion of their revenue comes from that. They have near field communication and arm-based microcontrollers, such as for wearables, smartwatches, and things like that, as well as mobile charging. Make sure you don't miss our Qualcomm video and our discussion on this change in the weather for consumer electronics and smartphones. And of course, NXP, we don't invest in the company, but we especially like the communication they provide to investors on a very high level to get an understanding of the, the growth drivers for this market. So in their last earnings call, they did talk about this expectation that electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles are expected to be about 33% of total vehicles sold globally in 2023. And that number expected to jump to 40% in 2024. So I think maybe just to reiterate, we're talking a lot about the automotive and industrial chip downturn right now, but this is expected to be a temporary situation because of semiconductor content growth in support of things like EVs, industrial automation, power grid efficiency, so on and so forth. So that's still NXP's outlook over the mid to long term. Even if they get hit by this automotive downturn in the next couple of quarters, they expect it to be temporary. Let's jump to another one we get questioned about quite a bit, but that we don't own, monolithic power. This one's a bit different from the others. And so we thought it was a good one to include in the charts here. Automotive actually only about 20% of MPS's revenue in the last quarter. Industrial only about 9%. So monolithic power makes, as the name implies, power chips, uh, a lot of allocation to data center and communications power chips, which actually entered a downturn far prior to this most recent automotive weakness. So let's talk about this chart and their outlook, Casey. Monolithic power's most recent earnings report, we have Q3 2023, 475 million. The outlook for the next quarter is 452 million, which is a 2% decrease. Adjusted earnings per share was $3.08, and they didn't provide any guidance for the upcoming quarter. But what we do think is that non-AI data center and enterprise compute has possibly reached a bottom. And so it is possible that monolithic power starts to climb out of that hole in 2024, but they will have to make some adjustments and headway in that automotive and industrial segment. And in the meantime, what we do know, though they didn't provide specific adjusted earnings per share guidance, what they did provide was continuous gross profit margin deterioration in Q4, a few basis point percentage decrease expected year over year, as well as rising adjusted operating expense. Expect adjusted earnings per share and expect free cash flow to possibly be a headwind for this stock. As we're going to talk about here in a moment, this is one of the more premium priced stocks out there. We think there's a good reason for that because monolithic power has been a fantastic investment over the last decade, and they are dumping a lot of research and development dollars into continuous improvement of their power chips. But for the time being, this one, a lot of uncertainty surrounding monolithic power stock at this point. Okay, 
One last one that we think deserves specific call out because of its differentiated product portfolio, Allegro Microsystems. Um, we started covering this one almost a year ago. And Casey, let's talk about this one for just a few moments. We've done a few videos on Allegro Microsystems. We know a lot of viewers are looking for an update because it could be cheap. It could be. For Allegro, their revenue was up 16% year over year in their last quarter at $475 million for their revenue. They expect a 2.4 increase in their next quarter year over year as well. But their adjusted earnings per share ex is expected to decrease 17%. Last quarter, it was at $0.40 cents earnings per share on an adjusted basis. The one thing that we do need to watch out for, though, is 75% of their revenue was attributed to automotive last quarter. Yeah, a uh, big overallocation to automotive and industrial for Allegro, which has been a great thing the first couple of years since its partial spinoff from Sunken Electric in Japan. But that's a two-edged sword. Uh, if we're headed for a pretty rough couple of quarters through the first half of 2024, we could see a sizable deterioration in revenue and especially adjusted earnings per share because this is a pretty small company still. This is the smallest by far of the companies on this list. Also, they are fabless. The manufacturing is actually handled by their sister company, which is also owned by Sunken Electric. So uh, some moving parts here that add a little bit of confusion to the financial picture. We've been patient with Allegro since we started covering it over the last year, because in some ways it looks like a value stock. There's definitely opportunity for this to get clobbered pretty bad during this downturn. They also completed that acquisition of a startup called Crocus Technology for $420 million in cash. So it wiped out the big, nice cash and short-term equivalents balance that they had. And that was for TMR, magnetic sensors, or tunnel magneto-resistance sensors. Could be a massive growth driver for Allegro in the, in the next decade. But again, Crocus was a startup. They paid a lot of money for something that's not going to contribute much in the way of positive financial results for a while. So. That said, we wanted to hit on that one very briefly. Check out some of our older videos on Allegro Microsystems if you want to know what magnetic sensing is, if you want to know what tunnel magnetoresistance sensors are that Crocus Technology provides. Casey, let's show the, sh the chart here for price to free cash flow valuations. This is as of market open on January 8th, 2024. You can see that microchip, STM, and NXP semiconductors are all very low on this chart, whereas everyone else has a pretty high price to free cash flow. And the reason this is, as we've discussed, is all of these other smaller companies are scaling at this point. Those other three are well established businesses, and we expect these numbers. Nick, maybe you can explain this much more important metric here the price to forward free cash flow expectations for each of these companies and what that means for us as investors right now. Yeah, this is far more important. Of course, the future, more important than the past because that's how you value a business, not based on the past. It's based on the future. So you can see, again, we'll start with microchip, ST micro, NXP, still expected to be a value stock going forward through 2024. I'm not so sure based on analyst expectations that STM and NXP are going to continue growing their free cash flow as this metric implies. You can see STM's free cash flow expectation getting reduced to 18 from 25 based on the forward expectation and for NXP from 22 down to 15. If we do get a sizable automotive downturn, I actually think STM and NXP's free cash flow will be a bit flat from 2023 to 2024. But because microchip has been so behold in telling everybody that it's going to get pretty ugly, at least through the first half of 2024, you can see analysts have already priced in a reduction in free cash flow. That metric goes from 15 over the last trailing 12 months to 19 on a forward looking basis because analysts apparently not factoring for anyone else having a rough 2024, except for microchip again, because management was pretty clear expect some ugliness. So I think it's another reason why we like microchip, right? We like management's style. They're very transparent. And even if things do get pretty bad in 2024, we think for a long-term holding five to 10 years or best case scenario, 
indefinitely into the future, 19 times free cash flow is still a pretty reasonable price tag, at least in our book. And based on Mobileye's recent announcement, we really don't think that analysts have updated their expectations for 2024. We really do not expect Mobileye to generate more free cash flow in 2024 than they did in 2023. So this number here is, by all intents and purposes, useless. Okay, let's set monolithic power aside and talk about on semiconductor and Allegro microsystems. You can see that they expect to ramp up free cash flow in 2024 going from 95 and 68, respectively, down to 21 and 20. Is that a reasonable expectation? So I think our general thinking on here is for Allegro, we need more information first. This company could be a big outperformer in the coming years, but I'm going to see how management goes through this downturn because they haven't been through one before, at least as a public company. So curious to see how they manage this, but I'm inclined to say for Allegro, I'm not sure that they're going to get the big ramp up in free cash flow like Wall Street analysts have penciled in. So we're going to continue being patient, but closely monitor Allegro Microsystems. On Semi is an interesting one though, because it's actually also a very well-established company. It's been around for a long time. So you see that 95x trailing 12 month free cash flow. A lot of that is because of the silicon carbide investments that they made. For example, buying a bunch of equipment from air test systems. There's another company they've been buying equipment from called Excellus Technologies, ACLS, another semiconductor manufacturing equipment company that's an investor favorite. What could happen here is on semi has now gone through the bulk of their fab upgrades to bring some of that silicon carbide production in-house. And now those equipment sales start to fall off in 2024. And suddenly you get the big boost in free cash flow in the next year. This is another situation worth monitoring because it could deteriorate if the auto market downturn gets real nasty for them. But we're inclined to think this is actually a pretty good value stock right now if you anticipate the fall off in equipment spending next year. So I guess a little bonus coverage here, what's good for on semi could actually be pretty bad for air test systems and Excellus technologies next year. But let's see what they have to say about that because air test systems in particular, Excellus technologies, I've really been talking about like a lot of new customers also interested in doing some more things that on semi has been doing the last couple of years. So let's see, maybe they're able to bridge that gap. Yeah. In summary, Nick, I think we can say this is why we are still buying on semiconductor and microchip in small amounts. And we're keeping a close eye on Allegro Microsystems. And of course, if you're in Europe, STM and NXP are both very solid companies that we like here at Chipstock Investor. That is a wrap for this episode of the upcoming dismal auto market and its effect on the semiconductor industry. Check out our newest video on Qualcomm. It's an important indicator of the smartphone and consumer electronics market and the possible upside that we're going to be seeing in the next year. We also have a manual that dives into Qualcomm and explains its business model and gives you some education on whether or not that company should be in your portfolio. We'll make sure you have a link in our description to our Kofi shop as well. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and make sure you have notifications enabled. We will see you again soon at Chipstock Investor.